Good afternoon, everyone. It's David Schlothauer here with a very important tropical weather outlook and discussion for Friday, August the 9th, 2024. So to start off the video, here's a look at the latest GOES-16 True Color Visible Satellite Imagery provided by Dr. Levi Cowan at tropicaltidbits.com. There's a link in the description below this video where you can check out these satellite images for Free. That's the awesome thing about this. And what we have right now in the Atlantic is whatever's left with Debbie is long gone at this time. It's just an open wave over the Northeast. But now what we're going to really be watching is this tropical wave to the southwest of the Cabo Verde Islands. A lot of this messy convection that we're keeping an eye on. This area of disturbed weather is going to be moving towards the Windward Islands over the next three to five days. And regardless of tropical development, anyone living on these islands definitely needs to be monitoring the progress of this system because um, if you're on, say, the U.S. or British Virgin Islands, if you're on Antigua, if you're on, say, um, Martinique over here, Dominica, you're going to get quite a bit of heavy rainfall and gusty winds. And then if you're in Puerto Rico, you definitely need to be watching this. If you're in Haiti and the Dominican Republic too, you're definitely going to need to keep an eye on this wave as well because this is going to be moving pretty far to the west before it makes this turn potentially to the north. Now, when taking a look at the latest National Hurricane Center, seven-day graphical tropical weather outlook, these updates are released at least four times a day, which is awesome. And the National Hurricane Center has upped their chances on this. We are now looking at a 60 percent chance of tropical development with this wave envelope over the middle of the main development region located roughly almost 40 degrees west in longitude and regardless of tropical development folks if you're on these northern windward islands including barbados if you're in say the british u.s virgin islands antigua if you're over haiti if you live in Haiti, if you live in the Dominican Republic, including for Puerto Rico, you definitely need to be watching this because this could bring in some pretty hefty rainfall, gusty winds, and some elevated surf regardless of tropical development. So now it's time to take a look at how this system will evolve over the next five to even seven days as we look ahead into the future here using our latest European model guidance courtesy of weatherbell.com because on tropical tidbits we don't have the 12z out just yet so this is theoretically the latest model that we have and this look at the 10 meter wind speed in knots so what we have here we have an open wave and what i mean by an open wave is we do not have a consolidated bonafide system here the wave axis is tilted northeast to southwest here just moving into the islands so this is technically not going to be designated on this model as a tropical storm or a tropical depression until we have a closed surface low i want to make that clear in this video as we go forward in time though this wave pocket gets a lot more sharper you can see definitely here we have southwesterly winds on this side of the wave winds really get um, come around pretty tightly around this wave pocket as the northern lobe of this concentrates itself. So this would be over, say, Antigua. If you're in, say, the British US, US Virgin Islands, if you're in Puerto Rico, you're going to want to monitor this. And so this is for Tuesday next week. So this is August the 13th. When we go later on through the day, we can see that the system then probably closes off into a tropical depression here, maybe even a tropical storm with a little bit of fetch here of winds of about 34 knots or about 38, 39 miles an hour. But that's not all. If we look at the rest of the European model, this continues to develop in a healthy fashion once the system moves into the open Atlantic. But there's a lot of questions here on will it even be here or will it even be further west or further to the um, east here? And there's a lot of questions on that. Um, and I'll show you that here in a second. But as we go forward in time, beyond, say, about 180 hours out, we have a bona fide tropical storm, if not even a low-grade hurricane here. And the furthest I'm going to go out is all the way through Saturday next week. So I don't like to really do this in these videos because I really want to keep these really accurate 
professional and not really jumping to the conclusion but i will do that in this video since we do have enough reason to, reason to do that because of the high confidence and we can see towards the end of the model run we might have a hurricane and there's been a lot of people saying that uh, this is going to become a hurricane yes but where will that hurricane be will it be off the florida coast will it be over here or will it even be over here like some what the canadian operational model shows so there's a lot of wiggle room here in such a way we do not know exactly will this northerly turn occur soon enough to where it does not impact anyone with the winds or will it occur later where this could get really close to the florida coast and skim the carolina coast we don't need another historic flood threat over here in the carolinas it's been really really bad there people still flooded due to the heavy rainfall power outages a tornado outbreak it's just been really a doozy after debbie went through that area and I would really, really hate to see another system crawling up the Florida coast here and then kind of curving out with what I'm about to show you. Now, of course, regardless of tropical development, this will bring quite a bit of meaningful precipitation over these islands. This is in the Caribbean region. And so when we go forward, we can see there is our wave. So again, regardless if this is a closed low or not, there will be a lot of rainfall, potentially significant flooding in some of these islands, especially in the tall mountain range of some of these islands, you get a lot of orographic forcing on the windward side. So that could really amplify a lot of the rainfall. And then once this gets into Puerto Rico, we could have a more compact system where the southern facing of this island. Now, Puerto Rico is notorious of getting some significant rainfall depending on how the wind interacts with this island. So if you have a southerly wind, you're going to get a lot of rainfall on the south facing mountain sides versus the leeward side where you're not going to get a whole lot perhaps only maybe one or maybe two inches of rainfall versus the southern side, you can get a lot more, okay? And so going forward here, then this goes out over the ocean and brings a lot of rainfall where no one lives other than ship interests. I want to make that clear. Ship interests, boats, and any flotation device out there like buoys will probably be able to give us some more information on how strong this actually is with recon data as well. Here's a look at the rainfall forecast in a three day time span. So again, 72 hour precipitation. This is not the full forecast. And you can see Puerto Rico could get quite a bit, again, depending on ge um, the geography and depending on how the winds interact with this. The southern facing slopes could get as much as six to eight inches of rain, whereas the northern sides may only get maybe two to three inches of rainfall. Some of these other islands here could get as much as two to three, maybe even four inches of rainfall. Again, from a tropical depression at the very most at this point or an open wave as it passes and straddles the northeastern Caribbean into the southwestern Atlantic. So keep in mind, regardless of how organized and how well developed this is, there will be impacts. And one of those impacts will be the surf. Here's a look at the wave forecast from the European model, illustrating how high the surf will actually be on some of these islands like Antigua. If you are on, say, Dominica, Martinique, as well as if you are on Guadalupe Island, you could see surf as high as 12 feet. Yeah, 12 feet from a tropical depression or an open wave. If this does not close off in time, there is going to still be a lot of surf with this. So regardless of development, there could be some coastal impacts like coastal flooding and some very high elevated surf. So stay away from the beaches by early next week. This would be for Monday, Tuesday, and a Wednesday as this move as this swell moves over these islands especially towards the northern end of that now once this gets into the southwestern atlantic the swells are going to get more bigger we can see the leading edge of the seven foot swell here expanding out from this tropical storm if not even a hurricane at this point and then look at bermuda Bermuda could really get um, slammed with a lot of surf here with wave heights, perhaps even 12 to 14 feet. And I did get some comments in the video yesterday saying, oh, this is going to be a fish storm. No one should worry about this. 
okay, while it could be a fish storm, that does not mean you won't see impacts. You will see water impacts such as surf along the coast here of the northeast. And yes, you are looking at, say, Cape Hatteras here. That could have surf up to even 10 feet. Some breakers approaching 20 or even 25 feet. And then, of course, if you're in Cape Cod here um, in, say, um, Massachusetts, when we go forward towards the end of the model run, if this gets anywhere close to these islands or to this Cape area, as well as New York, you could see surf even topping 20 feet from such a system. Even so, yes, it doesn't make landfall. You don't need a system to make landfall. All you need is a system to do this and get really close to the eastern seaboard. And that that is all you need to cause a lot of problems like flooding strong winds, and some high surf. So I really wanted to really iterate on that. Just because it's a fish storm, or if it does, doesn't mean your impacts will not be anything. There will be impacts, all right? I just make that clear for those people that are watching this video. So now another way we could see this too, um, another model that I wanted to show you all is the GFS. This is the Global Forecasting System. This just came out of me making this video. So this is the 12Z run. This is the uh, three plot system from Tropical Tidbits showing us where our system here is with that vort max. This is vorticity, height contours, and wind barbs at 5,000 feet above the atmosphere. And what this illustrates is where our disturbance actually is and how it evolves with time. So we can see here in 84 hours, this is by Monday night. Monday afternoon, August the 12th and the 13th, there is our wave envelope. Remember, this is not a closed surface flow. This is a wave pocket because if it was closed, we would have westerly winds and a closed isobar contour here at the 5,000 foot level. So going forward, this does try to close up on the GFS, but really has a hard time doing so. This is a very compact system. Now, it is very important here. How will the structure matter here with the, with the system? If we look at simply a 06Z run from last night, we can see that the system was much more compact and much more stronger and even to the north a little bit versus the system on the 12Z output is a little further south and not as well defined, which makes sense of what we're seeing with the Euro. And this is gonna matter a whole lot. Strength here really does matter. If this system is able to gain intensity and organization before it reaches the islands, then the system could actually turn north sooner. Now, if the system is weaker, like the GFS has this, then this could end up becoming a big problem more than what, um, say, if this turns out to see, because now the system is going to follow the low-level ridge axis, which you see here. You can see the ridge here to the north that is nosing over Florida. And the, the, the vortex is following the net flow of this low-level steering around that ridge. So when we go forward, the system, only the only way it's going to gain latitude is if it intensifies and gets more organized, which eventually happens. But eventually what you, we end up seeing is a trough here in the northeastern U.S. or southeastern U.S. that will try to erode the um, western flank of the low-level ridge axis that is over basically Florida. And so this is able to turn more to the Northwest, but look at that turn happens too late. And we have people that live in Haiti. I did not want to forget you all. If you're in say uh, Jamaica, this come doesn't come too close, but yeah, it's, it's there. It's in the range of possible outcomes here. And it's over the Dominican Republic and even just to the South of Puerto Rico. So yes, Puerto Rico definitely needs to be watching this. Do not take your focus off of this. Then this gets into, say, the Bahamas, the Turks and Caicos Islands by Thursday next week. This would be August the 15th. And look at this. This comes really, really close to the Florida coast. Yes, technically, technically, this is the fish storm. All right, I'll let you know right now. But guess what? Look how close that gets. And think about this. Dorian, Dorian, well, we thought it was going to be a fish storm at first, right before it made landfall. But I wanted to tell you, that's a Cat 5 vignette that brought impacts to Florida, right? Because it was so close, it was so big. So we really got to be careful, okay? Just because, oh, the GFS is, has this as a fish storm doesn't mean ignore it. 
do not take your focus because that's a really bad idea. That really is, honestly, folks. So um, going out to about 180 hours out, actually, we will go a little further out. We'll go all the way out into Saturday, August the 17th. This is the furthest we're going to go out because there's a lot of uncertainty here. And we can see just how close this does get to Florida. If we go back and look at the latest or the previous run, the 06Z run, we can see here it's way over here. And this barely comes close to Cape Hatteras. All right, if we look at the last run before that, the 0Z run from last night or yesterday, you can see how this has evolved. This has changed pretty dramatically. And now recently we have gotten this westerly trend. Should this continue, we will have to wait and see what our 18Z models show. But I really wanted to make it clear, people living in Florida definitely need to be watching this. The Turks and Caicos of the Bahamas, Grand Bahama, Great Abaco, definitely need to be watching this, including for the Dominican Republic. Because this has a high ceiling for a major hurricane. Not for, well, sorry to spit that out for a hurricane. Not a major hurricane like some other YouTubers are saying, but you get the idea. Okay. So our ensembles, I really need to hurry up with this video. We're at five minutes and I've not moved on very much. So when you take a look at the ensemble prediction system, this is a cloud of possible outcomes on the Euro. And we can see, look at some of these members are to the north and some of these members are to the south. And you can see the cloud here. And then look at how big this cloud really gets. Theoretically, yeah, Jamaica has a close encounter with one of its members there moving over the area. And then, of course, the Dominican Republic. In other words, we are not done seeing shifts to the west or to the east making this slower or faster. It all really depends on how organized this will get before it approaches these islands of the windwards. Okay, that's going to really be an important factor here because if this develops later than what models think, then this is going to end up somewhere near Florida or even, say, the eastern seaboard and even perhaps the northeastern and eastern Gulf of Mexico. Another ensemble cloud of possible outcomes is the GEFS ensemble and showing us there Again, look how large this ellipse is of possible outcomes. Theoretically, still Florida is under the gun here with some of its members indicating a hurricane approaching Florida versus other members that keep this away well out to sea, but also maybe impacting Bermuda, which is that little dot on your screen. So here's another look and to visualize what the ensemble is showing here on the Euro. This is from weathernerds.org. This is in the next four days. This is a zero Z run. So the European ensemble is more delayed than the GFS, GEFS ensemble. But we can see what it is showing here. Lots of members here bringing this to tropical depression status. But again, that will depend if the wave closes off. If we look at the five-day forecast, we can see some more or more members pick this up. So move this over, say, uh, Puerto Rico. And then you can see here in the next day, this is day five, day six, day seven, we can see still theoretically the weaker members bring this further west versus the stronger members bring this much further to the east and to the north, which isn't so surprising when you think about it. When this system is able to strengthen a little faster, it's able to turn sooner to the north. And then, of course, when we look at our day nine forecast, some members, yes, they do bring this to hurricane intensity. But again, there's a lot of uncertainty this far out. Again, we theoretically have a member still over the eastern Gulf of Mexico versus one member as far east as the middle of the Atlantic. And most of the majority of the ensembles here showing it over Bermuda. But you cannot always rely on these. These could also shift much further west. And that's why we have the GFS to look at because that is showing a more westward move. In fact, if we look at the GEFS ensemble, you can see here, look at this. And now look at this. You can see this is the 12Z. Oh, wait, let's see if we got the newest run out. This is, we will take a look at that on weathernerds.org because I want to make sure that I am providing some latest information here in the video, showing you all, yep, that we're out to about, let's go out to day 10 and look at that. And you can see some of these members are still showing us again that Florida is not in the clear just yet. You can see some members here, 
and another member theoretically going into the golf. How crazy is that? Probably not even going to happen, so I wouldn't worry about that. And then the majority still big ensemble envelope here difference between the eastward move or the westward move. Another thing we really need to keep in mind is how warm these sea surface temperatures are in the Caribbean and in the southwestern Atlantic. They are definitely above average, so this system does not have a problem of rapidly intensifying under these oceanic conditions. Even in the Gulf, if this were ordered to move into the Gulf, running well above average, and in fact the entire Gulf is running at least two degrees Celsius above normal. And when we look at the coral reef watch here, um, looking at the actual sea surface temperatures, we are already in the upper 80s to lower 90s off the Louisiana coast. And then in the southwestern Atlantic, we are in the mid to upper 80s. So again, not a problem for this disturbance at all. This has a very high ceiling. Theoretically, some members bring this to major hurricane intensity over the ocean of the Atlantic. So now looking at upper ocean heat content, this is really important. So let me switch over there. You can see upper ocean heat content for this system, definitely really high enough again to support a category one, two, three, four, five, hypothetically. And then of course in the Caribbean, really high upper ocean heat content. So if this wanted to go even further west, then make that turn last. This is gonna be moving over some very, very exceptionally high upper ocean heat content. Just how high that actually is, you can see when we zoom in a little closer, this dark red area illustrates heat content right around 200 units. You can see on the bottom of your screen here, 200 units in the dark red, and also that includes for the loop current in the Gulf of Mexico. I mean, these are extreme exceptional values of upper ocean heat content that could theoretically support a very intense hurricane if the background state of the atmosphere cooperate. Now that we talked about that disturbance, the overall environment over the next two weeks will remain fairly favorable for tropical cyclone genesis over the Atlantic. You can see the MJO here right now in phase one, which is right now over pretty much Africa. And it's gonna be moving into phase two, phase three, and phase four. When it gets into this phase, so I'm gonna put a check mark right in here Theoretically, it is very conducive, very favorable, optimally superimposed with our very warm sea surface temperatures for tropical cyclone genesis. We know what's coming. It's been well modeled at this time on climate models. And by the way, NOAA predicts still a hyperactive Atlantic hurricane season or a very active one. This includes our four named storms that we have already had. So they are still expecting up to 24 named storms 13 hurricanes potentially, and up to seven major hurricanes. So this is, we're not even done yet, and we're just getting started. And I'm really, really concerned about what late August, really into September, and really into October holds against us. Because again, we've been ready for this for a very busy season, and we know what's coming based on our climate models. Also, another way we can see this is, too, on the GFS uh, model, indicating a uh, look at this the mjo very active here in phases two three and four which again backs up all the evidence that we have in this video that the season is going to kick off really intensely and really hard even so there's only one storm out there on the gfs believe me there will be others that will follow behind it shortly thereafter so looking at the um climatology here really quickly we are pretty much here right now Actually, let me draw this up specifically. So we're roughly about in here. We are beginning that rapid uptick in the Atlantic. And by no surprise, that's what's exactly going to happen in the next five days. Once we approach about the, the 12th or the 13th of August, we're really going to have some hyperactive activity, I believe. And then once we go into September, of course, is the peak and superimposed, we could have a very high exceptional peak this year. Now that we talked about this tropical wave that is located now in the central main development region, anyone watching this video, please share this because again, this is moving into towards their direction, gonna bring a lot of rain, gusty winds, and some high elevated surf like we talked about. And then of course, could this move into the Gulf, into Florida, into the Bahamas, and then eventually clip the Northeast coast? We will talk more about that in future uploads. But in order to do that, you need to subscribe to the channel. If you haven't already, 
please consider subscribing, hitting the like button, ringing the bell notification icon to get my latest live streams, updates on this. We're going to be doing a lot of live streaming on this in the next couple of days. And also, be sure you share this with your family and friends on social media. But anyways, thank you all for watching today's detailed tropical weather outlook and discussion for Friday, August the 9th, 2024. Have a fantastic rest of your Friday, and I'll be back with you more tomorrow.